क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द फाइल सिस्टम स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ सिस्टम एंड देन वी विल नो द लेयरिंग ऑफ द फाइल सिस्टम स्ट्रक्चर एंड विच लेयर डू वॉट वर्क इन दैट पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर एंड वॉट आर द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ यूजिंग दिस लेयर्ड फाइल सिस्टम स्ट्रक्चर as we know that disk is used as most of the secondary storages to use and store the information per a particular file system it is done so because of the convenience of two of the reason first is that a disk can read and write at any place that is a block can be read from the disk modify it and this rewrite on the same place on that disk The second option is that we can access to a data that is residing on a disk directly. That is that access can be done randomly or sequentially based on the location. So at this locations we only need to move the pointer of the read write head and wait for the disk to rotate so that we can sequentially or randomly access the data. now for the ease of the io improve efficiency and managing this io system we transfer the disk from the memory in an unit of blocks each block can also contain the sectors now depending and open the operating system management this disk sector can vary from 30 bytes to 4096 bytes usually its size is among this 512 bytes Now the first one we will discuss today about this layered file system structure is the file system. Now the file system can have many of the ease of containing storing locating and accessing data in the disk. But it has two design problems. The first one is first the designing of the file should be known to the user and the directory structure now known to the user should contain all the files information like the files entry in the directory the files entry in the mapping and all the directory structure that is maintained within it and the second issue is the translation of the logical address mapping from the physical storage secondary option now in this way these two design problems can become the file system structures hindrance Now the file systems optionally uses a layered structure which we will describe in details now. First we will see the layered structures of the file system. At the end the top of the file system structure is the application programs that are the end products of the results of all the operations. Now in this file system structure that is made to the user we should define the attributes of a file the operations that are to be made to the file and all the directory entry that is mapped from the logical to the physical section Now from this application program there are almost another layer The next is the logical file system which contains the software information about the files. The next is the file organization module which actually organize the file information control the translation of the logical to the physical file. The next is the basic file system. This basic file system generally deals with the codes of the output and input of higher level and producing hardware level instructions. The next is the controlling IO. And the last are the devices that should be made and stored on the disk. to contain the file information so here it is moved from the low level to the higher level and each level uses the higher level features can be made up from the low level features that is configured here 
So now we will discuss about each of these layers in details. The I.O. control level generally consists of the device drivers and the interrupt handlers which will in turn handles the translation of the logical memory to the physical memory. Now inputs of this I.O. controller and the device driver is specifically higher level programming commands like retrieve block 123. And then we can say that we are having the output as a more lower level hardware oriented command or outputs which can be understood by the hardware and then which can be used as a machine level instruction. So in this way the hardware control output can be given as an input of a higher level or the machine level output. Now this hardware instructions then identifies the I.O. controller from the rest of the operating system. Now the device driver writes the specific bit patterns to specific locations of the devices to tell us that which device location is to use and what is the action to take place. So in this way I.O. control is done by all the devices using this device structure and then performing the I.O. control on that particular device drivers and interrupt handlers. The next we will move to the basic file system. Now the basic file system can only issue some generic commands like from the physical blocks and retrieve data from these physical blocks. Now the physical blocks are identifiable as the integer constant addresses like say track 2, sector 23, block 51 and then drive 52. So in this way we can address to the integer values from the physical blocks. Now these physical blocks are to be mapped to the logical file systems to match the numbers. Now this layer also manages the buffers and the caches that holds various types of file system, directory and block structures. Now a block is allocated by a buffer then previously by any transfer of block on the physical memory. So if there is no free block then the buffer manager should free up the buffer space or allocate more memory buffer to complete a requested I.O. that is defined by this I.O. control section. Now the basic file system also maintain all the I.O. control and the device information and the metadata that is the basic constitution of a file system. So its implementation and maintenance is in crucial importance to the file system maintenance. The next layer is the file organization module. File organization module knows about the files, their logical address and their physical address. Now by knowing the type of the file that is to be transferred and the location of the file, we can actually translate the logical addresses to the physical secondary storage devices. Now the logical addresses can range from as we have mentioned in the basic file system, say from 0 or 1 through n. But the physical memory space or the addresses of that particular files are different from each other. Now there should be a translation from the logical file system to the physical bus system must be done. And this is done by this FARG organization module. Along with this translation, it also keeps up an information of the free space manager which allocates the unallocated block to the file manager that is to be requested and then needed by the file organization module. So the free space manager then generally collects all the unallocated blocks and then requests it on the file organization module. The next step is the logical file system. Finally we are reaching this logical file system that is containing the metadata of a particular file system. We know that the metadata constitutes all the file system structure information excluding the contents or the basic modes of the files. So the files is containing the structure wise in the logical file system. And this logical file system then searches through the directory to maintain the directory structure and to tell us the device driver that what operations is going on that particular device. The file attributes are stored in a file control block and FCB which is maintained in this logical file system. This FCB contains the file attributes like owner, permission, location of the contents of the files and so on. 
So in this way, the logical file system uses the file organization modules physical address mapping, which uses the basic file system's generic issues comments and the IO control which uses the devices. So we can see the every layer is uses its lower level features to use its own features. Now as the application programs or the end product is are given to us, then we can say that this layered architecture can allow us to use multiple file systems in a single system. So a file system can use, can have more than one logical file system and file organization modules within it. And the transfer of data between these organization modules and the IO control blocks can take place very seamlessly. Like an Unix file system or UFX, which is based on the Berkeley Fast File System or BFFS, also produced by the Microsoft Windows operating system like FAT, FAT32 and WNTFS that is a Windows NT file system is also used in this many types of different file systems. It also uses CD-ROM and DVD-ROM or DVD-RW file system structures. Although Linux uses over 40 types of multiple file systems, it the standard solution of a file system in Linux is to generally extended file systems. It generally uses ext3 and ext4 versions of the Linux file system to use. Now for the layered architecture is very implemented easily and seamlessly, but there are also overhead of designing the operating system. Now the operating system designer needs to take care of how many layers should be there, should they be there in the file system structure and then what layers should perform what operations. So this should be done in the operating system design level. So that is why layered file system structure is often seldomly adopted and then used. Now the distributed file system which is another type of file system that is an application program uses different points of mounting as a file system can be mounted at different part on a remote server or on a client and server model of that particular structure. Now this different multiple file system structure supports gives us a new area of the operating system design. Google uses these features as its creation of the new flexibility and reliability of giving the file system structure support to its users. Now the Fuse file system structures also uses this type of transformation. It rather gives more flexibility by creating file system at the user level than the kernel level. So that we know that there are more user file systems present than the kernel file systems. So we can transfer the user file systems from one another and restrict the use between them by using this fuse functionality. So they are reaching more reliable file system structure by this providing layered facility. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.